All right, so, uh, so I'm Mike Reed. I'm the uh, Software Defined Storage Director in the Storage hey. Group in DCG at Intel, which is, that's kind of a mouthful. So this is a, a really cool title uh, for what I'll be talking about. There's a lot of aspects to Software Defined Storage. I'll just gonna briefly touch on them. We're gonna spend most of the time talking about a Software Defined Storage Controller. What is that? What does it do? Uh, what are the challenges? Okay, so in order to do that, let's just talk about kind of the end user pain points around storage in general. And I, I, these are general, but these have more of a slant to like enterprise challenges. And what you see here is obviously cost. We all know that storage capacity is exploding. It's going at above 50% CAGR year on year, and IT budgets are at about 2%. So there's a problem there. So your OPEX, if you have to increase your, your operational expenses with the capacity, you're in a bit of trouble. Okay, we know that. There's also challenges in lock-in. So for years, the storage industry, you know, we've tried and failed with standards. Uh, things tend to verticalize. There's different user interfaces, different features. Uh, they don't, they're not real compatible. So that's a challenge that the end users face. And then cloud readiness. Um, we did a recent survey in about 70 percent of them said their own private cloud initiatives, about 70 percent of them said that traditional storage or their current storage offerings is, is being held back. So what are the issues? Well, if you look at the traditional storage boxes, you're typically going to build an application, A, B, C, D, E, F, and you're going to build the storage out for that. But if you run out of, if you have plenty of capacity here, but you don't have here, you can't just automatic, automatically reallocate and go get that storage. So there's lots of challenges with that. I mean, you have limited sharing, limited oper interoperability, different management interfaces across the board. So again, you would have to increase your um, resources with capacity in this case. Uh, there's different support contracts, and there's limited scalability. It's kind of a forklift upgrade. A lot of the pain, a lot of the expense uh, that IT administrators do is actually moving from one system to another, or even upgrading a system. Uh, if I needed one more terabyte of data, and I'm completely out, and I'm using a traditional system, I've got to put back in a whole new one. So I over-provision. So there's lots of challenges there that we're trying to address. So, software-defined storage. Everybody has their definition of software-defined storage. Uh, we have ours too. A lot of people think that software-defined storage is just I'm putting software on a standard high-volume server. Well, that's a piece, that's, that's, that's a, a component of it. We just call that server-based storage. It's kind of an Intel-specific term, but it's storage on a server. That's not software-defined. Software-defined means that I can interoperate and I can dynamically decide how to provision the storage across multiple boxes in a heterogeneous environment, multiple orchestration stacks, as I may have more than one, or I may be migrating from one to another, I may be doing some testing, or I may not have an orchestration stack, but I'd still like to automate all my storage under the same umbrella, and different data services. So from our perspective, software-defined really means software-defined is a much broader view, and it's, in, it's more realistic to what we would see in an enterprise data center, uh, both now and the future, where you have a heterogeneous environment. Um, so the thing that I'm going to be talking most about is this, this piece here. We think this is the critical piece to unlock this, uh, help people uh, get out of that cost OPEX issue, uh, help them avoid some of the lock-in, uh, help them deploy private cloud. And that's this, what we call an SDS controller. You can think of it as kind of a, 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 a sub-orchestrator. Okay? And then down here, like I said, some people <coughs> call, if it's a commodity box down here with software on it, they call that software-defined storage. We say, hey, you could have, a, well, we call that a server-based storage. You could have server-based storage here. You could even have traditional storage here. You could have traditional storage out here that's controlled by the controller that doesn't have orchestration above it. It's software-defined. Okay, so addressing the end user pain points. So if we look at the traditional system here, you typically have a rack, a box, whatever you want to call it. Um, you, you have this silo storage and it was going to have your control and management, your data services, and I call data services different than data protection. Data services could be dedupe, encryption, uh, compression, remote replication, whatever. Um, da data protection is, you know, your RAID, your erasure code, your triple replication. Okay, and then you typically are going to have proprietary hardware that looks much like the picture that Roger showed you 
where you have redundancy all within the box, not across the network. Okay? And you're going to move that over um, to something that looks like this. And now what we've done, you, of course you've put orchestration in here. You could draw the picture without it. You don't necessarily have to have it. But you do, we think we need this here. This is this uh, control and management layer that goes across heterogeneous storage. Um, and we see um, that this thing needs to have um, standards so that anybody can plug into it. New storage, old storage, any storage. Um, so it just plugs in and most of the functionality is automatically there as soon as you plug it in. And your administrator needs to know how to operate this, not necessarily every one of this. Now, of course, there's probably some back doors and some things in here. But this thing needs to be open source. If it's open source and you have some cool bell and whistle here, you can put it up here so that it can be controlled. So we evolve this thing over time and we actually solve the end user problems. So up here, this controller is going to address this thing we talked about. You don't no, no longer have to you know, scale your resources with your capacity as you get new capacity and you want to use capacity maybe from a different system. Maybe it makes sense to, use your, to, to bring in that new Ceph uh, box with some Red Hat support alongside your VNX box, right? Because you have different ways, uh, usage for that. But you can control and automate it here. And if this is already set up and automated under VMware, why can't we just plug in OpenStack here and you have all the same storage all set up? Again, big vision, fully software defined. Well, now the data effort, services, question, question yeah. Effort will take from the various manufacturers to implement Intel's vision for software defined storage. Are they gonna have to write or implement whatever code on their boxes to be able to in integrate with your software defined vision, your controller? So initially, initially, yeah, they'll have to plug in, just like they have to plug into VMware and Microsoft and Cinder for OpenStack today, they would have to plug into this. Now, Cinder is one option that we could expand to be an SDS controller. I don't know if you're, fam are you familiar with Cinder? So why not take Cinder, expand it, and have it work with multiple orchestration stacks? That's one, one path, right? Uh, we're pursuing a couple of paths, Cinder and another one will, will the next couple of slides. Um, but the effort is that, you know, first of all, we have to get them on board that, hey, it's, it's not about just saying, hey, I have a, a commodity box and I created a new scale out uh, software that addresses your scalability problems and now I rule the world and there's none, shall, there shall never be any other storage. I'm software defined. We call that server based storage. You still have to account for the fact that people are going to continue to want a heterogeneous environment. They have a heterogeneous environment. People are going to innovate, but I can't keep scaling my OpEx. Right? So I think that it's going to take them to get on board and uh, contribute, embrace the open source, embrace what the customers need them to do in order to continue to have those enterprise data centers that can compete with cloud. Uh, and they're starting to do that. Um, but that's going to take a little while for that to happen. And then, of course, they have to plug in. Plugging in will be easy. Once you get a groundswell, everybody will plug in. Right? Okay. Um, so, and then the data services is further off, right? Um, that's challenging. But some of the simpler things may happen earlier. The tougher stuff is pretty far out. Simpler things is if I do remote replication, I might be able to get that to work across one vendor system and then maybe a couple of vendor systems. That is feasible. Doing deduplication. I'd be surprised if you could get replication to work between a couple of vendor systems. It, it, this one's further off. <laughs> I, would, I, I agree with you, but again, we have a big vision. I think you can start with some of the easier ones and then and then move it out. <laughs> you know what's going to happen, right? You in, in that particular case, good luck to you. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, if people are already starting to embrace this model, but when they embrace it, they, they provide the data services, they provide the boxes, and they provide this. And so we're seeing a lot of this... The, the, a lot of vendors that are trying to provide this architecture, but it's all theirs. So what problem did we really solve, right? Um, okay, so... We reduced that vendor's cogs. That's what we solved. What? That vendor reduced their cogs. That's what they solved. Yeah. Okay, so Copperhead. What is Copperhead? Has anybody heard of Copperhead? I have a couple of folks have. Okay, so... <laughs> it, <laughs> Intel folks don't count. <laughs> So Copperhead, have you heard of Viper, EMC Viper? Mm -hmm. yeah. yep. This is the Viper controller. Viper had a controller, which is very much an SDS controller. And then it had scale I.O. they kind of put under there, and then they had an object stack. This is just the controller piece. 
Uh, we work with them, they open source this, and they have a new name for it, it's called Copperhead. Okay? It just actually hit to where you could open and actually write to it in August. So this is very new. Um, but, and so w this controller does what we did. You can see I have multiple orchestration stacks that it plugs in. These are actually future, they're working on these, but this is a marketing slide here. But it does plug into OpenStack, Microsoft, and VMware today. Okay, that's different than Cinder, obviously. Um, most of the stacks that it, that it uses are EMC, to be honest. Um, it does plug into some other traditional stacks, though, down, or not stacks, systems um, from other vendors, NetApp, Hitachi, uh, et cetera. So it is doing some of that now. We aim to build it out to, to, to support more of the commodity things. It's, it supports scale I.O. today, no surprise. Um, our plan is to ha help them build this part out as well so it really can meet the vision of what they want to do. But this controller does a lot of things. Um, it does a, a discover of, of the resources. It can classify those resources in different uh, storage pools. Uh, then you can automate it, set up self-service provisioning, and you can integrate it with the different cloud stacks. So this is a pretty neat uh, tool that's just been open sourced here. Now, um, we get a lot, so there's two open source things. As I said, if we have, think of the SDS controller as the federal government and all the storage systems are states. If we have 50 states and 20 federal governments, that does not work well. That's why we think it needs to be open. Now, we're not saying that we, by saying that I'm saying it's, there has to be one controller. Maybe there's several that do different things that are cool. But what we do need to do, in our view, is we need to make sure that the interfaces are the same. So that's one of our goals, to make sure that the plugins are the same. Um, right now, Copperhead already supports the Cinder drivers. So one of the things we might do is extend the Cinder drivers, or maybe we work with them. So that's one of the things we're trying to do. If you look at this, I, I compare it to Cinder and Manila. Cinder is the block, uh, well, what, what we call an SDS controller. Uh, for OpenStack, Manila is the file version um, for OpenStack, um, and this is Copperhead. So if we, com if we compare the two, um, what you see, if you just summarize it, is that, you know, there's wide adoption on Cinder. There's, there's well over 45 different um, storage systems that plug into that, and it's growing all the time. And it's a mature, mature, uh, mature community developing around Cinder, uh, but again, it's specific to OpenStack. The main difference with Copperhead is, as I mentioned, it supports Microsoft um, and VMware, okay? But it does some enterprise things, so it does dynamic discovery. So if you already have an environment, so in OpenStack, if you have a storage environment and you have a few nodes of storage or a couple of systems, you're fine. But when you start getting into an environment where you may have hundreds, or maybe you have a fiber channel network already set up, this is where um, the Copperhead really shines. It can go out and automatically discover your topology, your systems, um, and it can automate how you set it up and configure it. It can roll back on errors. Um, there's a lot of enterprise features here with remote replication, automatically setting that up. HA between the Copperhead uh, controllers themselves across data centers, um, rolling upgrades of the capabilities. There's, there's auditing. So in a nutshell, Copperhead gives us the opportunity to jump ahead in enterprise readiness, but it was no, there's not a community around it yet because it's just brand new. So we got to get everybody to agree and, and jump into it. I'm getting this signal that I need to get out of here. So I think this is the last slide. Um, automated control and management. We need an open source SDS controller to solve these problems, and we've got to have community support. And, and we're working on both of these things. I'm not sure which one's harder, maybe this one, but they both have to happen. So, thanks.